I mean, what's just this been the last two weeks? I think you missed the last kind of portal madness and recruiting. So what's the last two weeks juggling that with also sort of, you know, game coming up? It's been a juggle for sure. Um, never quite been, been through anything like this. Uh, obviously, the landscape of college football has changed uh, drastically in the last few years. Um, but it, it's been uh, a learning experience, but a lot of guys uh, have had opportunities to be able to get on campus, see this place, uh, people that are going to come and, and, and hopefully make an impact on our program. And then also uh, we've, we've done a nice job, I think, of keeping guys that, that did maybe want to test the waters a little bit and look at other avenues. And we ended up getting them back, which was a big thing for us. So uh, now it's on to Clemson. What are, what are those conversations like when a guy does enter the portal and then, you know, a week or so later removes their name? Are you all already preparing for life after them? How does that um, kind of go about? No, I mean, it, it all depends on the situation. It's a case-by-case -case situation. And so um, if a player just wants to go and look at other opportunities, uh, that's, that's his, um, you know, decision to do that. But we, we're never really trying to kick somebody out. So when you have an opportunity to get really good players back that uh, you've invested time into, that you want to continue to invest time into, that are good students, that do things right on and off the field, uh, those, those guys are always welcome back. So um, those have been pleasant conversations, have been really positive conversations that we've been able to get some of those guys back and there's no hard feelings. This is just the landscape of where we're at right now. Coach, keeping things on the portal, obviously Clemson, top 10 defense, yeah. but some guys, starters hit the portal, some starters have hit the draft. Yeah. Uh, so how much harder is it to kind of scout these guys and kind of prepare with maybe half or so of their team, first team um, off? Well, they're, they're very much like built like an SEC program. Um, they've got a ton of depth up front specifically. They've got true freshmen that have uh, played really well and played a high, at a high level all year. Um, obviously having Trotter out is, is big. He's a heck of a football player. Number 33, the defensive tackle, a heck of a football player. Number two, the corner, heck of a football player. So, uh, and then the one, number one, the safety that went in the port of them. Those guys are all really good football players, but they're, they're, they're deep. You know, they, they have a really deep front seven um, that uh, is gonna be a challenge for us, right? It's gonna be a great challenge. And then on the perimeter, they do play a ton of man coverage. Uh, they get a five man rush with their, you know, with their talented front and they play a lot of man coverage. So it's gonna be a huge challenge for us on the perimeter uh, to win, to get open, to make contested catches, throw the ball into small, uh, small windows. And um, it, it's a great challenge for us being able to go and play um, Clemson because they aren't built at, at all like the majority of uh, teams in that, in that conference, being honest. Yeah. With some guys leaving, your depth's a little different. Are yeah. there young guys that you've seen in practice that you're eager to, to see in the games? Yeah, you know, I think Kamara getting back, you know, kind of building off the, the success he had towards the end of that that uh, stretch there and, and being able to play. And obviously with Zay being being gone, we'll hopefully continue to add to his role. Um, you know, you, you're, you're excited to see, um, you know, Shamar Porter maybe get some reps, maybe Jamari Wilcox get some reps. Um, but, you know, we're also trying to go uh, play a very high level opponent and, and we need this win. Uh, to go into the off season on the on the right note, and so it's been great to see them practice and get more reps. Uh, whether whether or not how much that translates to the game, I can't say right now. But we are excited about their development, about the work that they've put in uh, in this off season. Marcus just mentioned Malachi Wood is a guy yeah. impressed. Yeah, I know you talked about him on the radio. Yeah, what did you see from him? You know, he he's just continues to get better. He really does. Um, he, he's dedicated himself to changing his body to dedicating himself to his craft. He works at it, you know, post-practice. He's doing the right things to try to help himself continue to get better. He's a great kid. He's no issues. He's just the type of kid that you want to have in your program that you look forward to um, really working with him this spring, right? When the, when the bullets are flying a little bit more alive for him and putting him in a position to truly see his competition against better opponents and better skill set. So uh, been been really pleased with Malachi as well. We've More. seen many offensive linemen as long as him. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's a different one, man. I mean, he's he's built uh, in a lot of ways what you're looking for, obviously, at the highest level of football and continuing to gain his lower body strength, core strength. Um, when you're that long, it's hard to sometimes get in and out of your stance fast. 
but um, he's just gotten better and better. And obviously the length uh, is something we can't truly coach that he has in his body and um, makes it exciting to be able to work with him moving forward. You, you and Mark both talked about making changes this offseason, particularly when it comes to playing faster. Is there enough time to, to implement some of those ahead of the ball game, or are you kind of stuck um, with what you've done so far? We're just we're, we're more so trying to execute right now. There's There hasn't been a ton of time, honestly, to truly go into yourself. Like th This has been the most chaotic time I've ever been a part of in terms of going into a bowl prep. I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, just the amount of portal, this, that. I mean, it's this is probably not the time to truly do a wholesale change or, you know, we can tweak some things. But, um, you know, we knew we would lose snaps two years ago. I don't really recall a ton of people talking about pace of play two years ago. Um, you know, it's just more so we got to play faster at the quarterback position, continue to get to play in and out of the huddle um, and, and play faster. And it's all the same play calls that we always had. So. Um, we knew we'd lose plays when it came to the rule change, um, but we obviously don't want to be playing in the 50s. Ray Davis and Drew Tong announced that they were playing in the bowl game. How big was that to get those two guys back in for that game? Huge. Um, you know, Ray's, Ray's a guy that obviously has been extremely successful this year for us. Uh, dynamic with the ball in his hands. Um, you know, when you score 20 touchdowns and lead the SEC in, in, in total touchdowns, that's a special feat. And I've been really pleased uh, with him be making that decision to come when he doesn't really have to. Um, it, it's the right decision for the, the kid that he is. It doesn't surprise me being the teammate that he is, being the kid that he is. It doesn't surprise us at all. And it gets you another playmaker to get the ball in his hands and, and go win this football game. You know, going back to Marcus, getting him to lie back for their six and seven yeah. years that they just how big is that on top of the other players who are expected to get back to some of the guards at start this year? It's huge. I mean, when you get Eli and, and Marcus, two guys that have played a lot of football and they're really good friends. Uh, they're very close, you know, close together. And so when you get two guys that are uh, on the same page about the program, about what you're trying to do uh, within the system, understand the calls, um, that's huge to, to be able to get that. And when you do bring other people in, uh, they understand what the standard is. Uh, they can help us as coaches continue to uh, communicate the standard and what we're trying to hunt up uh, from, from an offensive standpoint. So really pleased with those guys making that decision and come back. I know you can't talk specifics until Wednesday and all that, but do you in general like the direction your quarterback room is, is going and moving forward? Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, you know, we've obviously had some success with some of the portal things and, you know, liking the guys that are coming in and, and being able to give us uh, just some, some fresh dudes to work with. I mean, sometimes, um, you know, you, you get big, big dudes that you can come in that can throw the football that are smart. Ultimately, that's that's fun to work with. So uh, definitely like where, where things are headed um, and we need to really work on the development piece. Now that we've got some guys coming in with some years that we can work with, I think that's huge, that we can truly work on developing that position. Devin talked to us Friday about, he thought it was cool to see Deuce and Shane kind of have an expanded role during this bowl prep. Is, is it part of it? I mean, they're probably not gonna play the game unless something happens, but cool to see those guys rewarded a little bit at the end of the year getting some more extra practice time just because of where you're at numbers For sure, I mean, specifically for Deuce, um, you know, been really, he's a guy that's made a huge impact on me personally, as a coach, player relationship. I, I, I love Deuce Hogan, he's a fantastic kid. He does everything you want in the program right. Um, he, he's just a tremendous human being. And so when you, you're able to see somebody come in, have an expanded role, get more reps in practice, his leadership skills are able to come to light a little bit and uh, kids feed off that. Everybody feeds off that. So I've um, been really pleased to be able to see Deuce be able to get some more reps. If you get a chance for some of those snaps for Wilcox, uh, we, we haven't seen him in a, in a long time, maybe back to summer. What kind of style, what could we expect to see from him in the running game? Uh, he's, a fa he's fast, he's shifty, uh, he's fast. He can stick his foot in the ground and, and, and go. Um, needs to continue to work on getting getting stronger and um, you know put some more weight on and um, go home and eat for the holidays a little bit so um, you know he, he can stick his foot in the ground and run he, he can definitely uh, he gives you a burst that that is exciting to see uh, he can really stick his foot like I said and, and you know obviously we haven't seen him live a, a whole ton 
and, and he's been kind of on and off the scout team and with us some. So I haven't seen him probably a, a ton, but, um, you know, he definitely can run. He can roll and uh, hopefully can run hard for us as well. What's the energy like at practice and around the building going yeah. into this game? Is it any different than it's been? Um, I think similar in a lot of ways. I mean, people are – obviously the practices aren't quite as long, right? And so we're kind of in and out of the, the, the practice field a little bit faster, so the juice is a little bit better. and. Um, just a little bit more energy as you just bop around a little bit, and especially some of those earlier practices where you're going against the defense. It wasn't truly Clemson prep, and you feel the competitive juices going again a little bit. Um, that's been exciting, and then the guys, you know, been around. They've liked to be around. We go and do some things as a team last night, which was fun, and um, it, it's been great. It, you know, the kids have been excited, and hopefully we can continue to build that as we go into this mini break that we have go down to Florida and have a good time. You kind of alluded to it earlier, uh, talking about the quarterback position. Um, obviously wide receiver is a big thing. People are you know, waiting to hear. Um, How has maybe that kind of been, even without a coach officially named as of yet? Yeah, I think we've done a pretty good job um, you know, without a coach being named. Um, you know, we've, we've gotten some quality players on campus. Uh, we've been able to retain some kids that we were excited about as well, trying to build their futures and their development. So, um, you know, it obviously helps when you do get a coach in place and uh, we'll get that done hopefully sooner than later and uh, be excited about that as well. So uh, I think we've done a nice job addressing a few needs that we, we, we wanted to try to get out there and address and, um, you know, continue to now develop the room throughout the spring. This will be a huge winter and spring for that room with a new coach to be able to be, be developed both physically, mentally, and all those things. So. We're excited about the direction of that room. And then what type of characteristics are you looking in for the new receiver coach? Um, communicator, uh, somebody that can truly, you know, relate to those guys in a way, um, both on and off the field, somebody that's played. Uh, the position is always very helpful to, to where the players, you know, believe in what you're saying because you've done it. You can still demonstrate because you're young enough and athletic enough to do some of those things. Um, and then obviously the discipline part being able to really get the room uh, structured the way that we want it to be, get those guys all on the same page, being everybody being accountable to uh, both on and off the field, academically, socially, and in the football building. Uh, I think that'll be really important. Okay, folks, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks.